the modern sciences maintain on their own accord that it is not their aim to impart any knowledge to human beings regarding what they ought to do. Questions regarding good, right, and ought are believed to be outside the sphere of scientific knowledge. Sci I, I don't think that uh, the perspective of science has changed regarding this even today. Questions regarding good, right, and ought are believed to be outside the sphere of scientific knowledge. Science provides us with the knowledge of means to attain certain ends, but does not engage in providing us knowledge regarding whether the ends are right, good, or ought to be pursued. Religion and ethics deal with the good ends to be pursued and seek knowledge pertaining to what is right and ought. And in recent philosophical traditions, some philosophers also maintain that there is no knowledge in morality. Morality is non-cognitive, like religion. So this is where Buddhism differs. Buddhism would say that there is genuine knowledge regarding moral questions. There is a possibility of establishing uh, validly the distinction between what is right and wrong, what is good and bad. And I will uh, speak about the Buddhist uh, way of determining that, uh, provided I have the time within the limits uh, imposed by time. <coughs> now, in Buddhism, we have a variety of terms that refer to different modes of cognitive activity. Cognitive activity, uh, all cognitive activity from the Buddhist point of view has some relationship to our sense experience. That is the beginning of cognition. We have senses, and we also have stimuli that interact with our senses. And that is the beginning of all our understanding about ourselves and the larger aspects of nature. But from the Buddhist point of view, one way of cognizing the given is uh, it is affected by our subjective uh, emotions. So we construct a world for various practical purposes, and uh, that world consists primarily of constructions uh, which include our own superimpositions. And this is what Buddhism calls knowledge or concept, concepts that are misleading. They can be practically useful. Now, we need concepts like the concept of the table, the concept of the computer, the concept of a man, all that we need. And they are constructions which are practically useful. But they don't uh, promote any kind of spiritual uh, development in us. They do not promote any insightful understanding of the nature of things. Yeah. So Buddhism would say that for an insightful understanding of the nature of things, it is necessary to uh, adopt a different mode of cognizing things and in the Buddhist tradition, we have this scheme of attaining knowledge which can be helpful in the transformation of a person, the emotive transformation of the person. Well, Buddhism, the main function of Buddhism is to transform the person 
both cognitively and emotively. So that is why when Buddhism speaks of liberation, it speaks of liberation of the mind from unwholesome emotions. And liberation which is a product of insight. So it speaks of cheto vimutti, which is at the emotive level, and panya vimutti, which, uh, liber which is a liberation which comes from uh, right understanding or uh, what I would call right knowledge, the right way of cognizing things, uh, which brings about a total transformation of the person. Now that kind of knowledge is considered in Buddhism as panya or pragna, which is insightful knowledge. Now the kind of knowledge that a meditator acquires, uh, and there is also a certain graduated scheme uh, of development of that kind of knowledge. Uh, a scientist need not observe certain practices that Buddhism would call seal or uh, first establishing a kind of behavior pattern which conduces to the cultivation of that knowledge. In Buddhism, one has to begin with morality, uh, a basic imposition of moral norms on one's conduct. Uh, because according to Buddhism, all unwholesomeness in our personality develops uh, because we just interact with the external world without understanding. Uh, so one has to reduce the impact of uh, that kind of emotional response to the stimuli with which we interact. And sila is a kind of uh, restraint that is imposed on external behavior, the bodily and uh, verbal behavior of a person. And this promotes what is called samadhi or uh, a kind of composure of the mind. And some of the meditation methods, which uh, were mentioned earlier, samadhi, uh, they are aimed at uh, calming the mind. Calming the mind so that uh, because uh, in meditation one cuts off some of the stimuli that excites unwholesome emotions. And when the stimuli are cut off, uh, the opportunity for those unwholesome emotions to get excited uh, is not there. And then with that calmed mind, one can uh, incline the mind to observe the reality, the reality of mind and matter. And the mindfulness method, which was spoken about a little while ago, is a method of analyzing what is going on within oneself, in mind and matter, both within and outside, uh, with a calm, unprejudiced, equanim with equanimity, without bias, without prejudice, and understand it. And this understanding releases all the unwholesome emotions. So uh, that is what is called the emancipating knowledge in Buddhism. And this method works. <laughs> because it works, why shouldn't we call it knowledge? I consider Buddhist teaching a kind of empiricism. Why or why not? That's a really big question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, this is a question that is very often raised. And uh, uh, I think at one point uh, in some of the early teachings of Buddhism, we find a statement made by the Buddha uh, regarding what there is. Uh, the question is raised by the Buddha himself. Uh, uh, what is everything? Everything that we can know about. And the Buddha says everything that we can know about is included in the respective 
sense faculties we have. The eye, ear, nose, tongue, the body, and the mind. And the respective stimuli, that is, sounds that we uh, come into contact with through the ear, uh, visual forms that we come into contact with through the eye, uh, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, thoughts. And the Buddha points out that if anyone were to talk about anything other than these, one cannot make sense out of it. So, uh, outside this, if one talks about anything, it's difficult to make any sense. So, in that sense, I would say that Buddhism is empiricist. 